Hello everyone, Mark Sajan again, and uh, it is time to take a look at the rendering features of ZBrush and uh, a couple tips about uh, working with various uh, materials and other things within ZBrush. So first of all, once you have uh, a figure, uh, then you can start uh, working on the rendering. And by default, if you press Shift R, it will render uh, the image. Uh, this Shift R uh, is uh, running the VPR best preview render solution. Now in my case I made a couple tweaks but uh, it's nothing fancy, it's quite a basic rendering setup that's used here. Now um, probably you notice but within ZBrush we have no separated uh, rendering window. So what you see here on the screen that is your actual rendered image. Now if you want to save it you have to go up here at uh, document and um, you have to actually export the image and once you export it that will be a PSD file and that is your actual rendering image uh, that you can use now um, if you want to open and save that's the document okay so again that is the document that ZBrush has now if you want to update the rendering whenever you just rotate or move around your previous render will disappear and uh, then you have to recalculate it again and uh, the resolution is driven by the size of the document so because what you see here is your actual rendered image uh, if it's running uh, that means this is the actual resolution if you want to change the resolution for example you want to create a higher sized image uh, right now it's quite small you have to change the size of the canvas the size of the background document uh, for that uh, you have to go up here and uh, you can adjust the sliders as you wish if you want to turn off the proportions the constraints you can turn it off here right now I will not uh, make it so difficult so I just hit double and it will ask, uh, it will warn you that um, about the resizing because when you are resizing these pixels, uh, actually it will change the look of the model. Now, if you just uh, spend a couple moments about um, the quality of the edges around here, so if you see these uh, qualities, it's quite nice. It's quite there's no problem with anti-aliasing, so it's a quite smooth outer edge. Now if I hit this OK, it will double the size and it will actually uh, change the edges because right now this original figure was dropped onto a uh, lower resolution canvas. So this means when you change the document size, you also have to redraw your model. So how to redraw? Now I'm in draw mode, so there is no edit mode here. I cannot rotate my image, but I can lay down a couple new ones okay so it's like a football team now let me control n control new and clear the canvas drag only one figure and instantly hit t to enter edit mode now because edit mode you know it indicates by these cross uh, framing so hair um, headline framing and right now I can rotate around but this new document has a different size. Uh, how to check the size? Because actually there is a, there's no visible difference. So you just have a larger document, but the, is it actually changed? So if you take a look at the document, it will say, oh yes, these values are doubled. So the canvas is really a doubled sized canvas. The only problem here that ZBrush, the user interface, is acting like a kind of a spying window. So you have just a small portion you can see through, but your actual canvas is way bigger. So it's, it's actually much bigger than your screen. So you have to scale it down. Now, when you take a look at the document palette, you will see some weird things you have a scroll zoom actual actual half size here 
and you also have this kind of a zoom you also have a zoom here but this one is zoom 3d now if you are using these features this is the same if you're just uh, using the button button on your pen so you can rotate it around um, this one is about the 3d content the figure itself in edit mode but if you are using these documents it will zoom the canvas the actual canvas and um, uh, let, let me change the background to something darker okay now it's way too dark so let me pick something else just for the demonstration purpose okay now it's a little bit darker so it is a little bit easier to see how the proportions are changing when I'm zooming in and out okay so this is the actual size of the document I've zoomed out now I have to 3D zoom in to the figure and when I'm making a rendering here with a BPR that rendering will be actually a quite high resolution when I do my export so when this one is done uh, that will be about 2500 pixel so this and I can export and ZBrush document let me export it and now it's ready to be opened in Photoshop okay so this is about the document sizing and the overall image resolution within ZBrush you don't have to use this double feature so it's not a necessity but if you want to create a higher resolution for yourself a higher resolution uh, rendered image uh, this is the way to do it now I would go back with the zoom in an actual half hall size so AA half uh, will in this case will fit into the screen so if you have a standing figure or a basic figure you can turn on shift P that is the ground plane and uh, if you have ground plane turned on uh, and you start rendering then you're you will receive a couple of shadows so what we are looking for is the base now as you see when you are creating a basic render with the shadows on the, on the plane on the floor then you have to pay attention on the light source so uh, there's a light option here and uh, if you're dragging your light source you can put it a little bit above and that way uh, the shadow is a little bit more coordinated so let me create again okay now the shadow is there um, as you see these are the default shadow settings and these default shadow settings are quite harsh these are quite strong uh, I will explain what to change and why but before we are moving on because it's quite good single image um, um, let me talk about the turntable features so this is one option to create a render but the other popular option is to create a rendered movie uh, a movie that's uh, used to present uh, your entire model by rotating it uh, on a turntable now if I turn this off turn this on this turntable feature it will automatically start rendering now this is it's really fast because right now it's nothing else just a bunch of screen captures so this is why it's relatively fast now uh, there the, the sequence of the screen captures is loaded into the memory so if I'm going up here the movie now I have a play movie option because uh, it's uh, loaded in so let me play this movie and wow 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 so we have a bunch of things going on so first of all we don't want to see the window the entire user interface we don't want to see so many logos so let me play the movie you have a logo here you have a logo here in the corner and you have actually a four second uh, turntable so there's no point using faded logos now how to turn them on and off uh, when you're going in a movie uh, as you see there is an option to full window recording so including the user interface 
and uh, just the document but this one is grayed out it will be grayed out once you created a movie so you have to remove the previously rendered movie by hitting on delete it will ask do you want to get rid of it yes you want to get rid of it um, no sorry not this one so yep yeah, it's deleted it's just not safe okay so I would set it back to the document uh, because we are only curious about the active window and also uh, just uh, take a look at the size so medium movie size is 50 percent now because let me check my video size so if I'm going in the document this is my actual size it's it's quite good it's not an HD or, or hall for but it's relatively good uh, so I can go up here and make sure that I'm picking on the large option because that's the hundred percent so in this case uh, the other two things about the two logos the first one is the overlay image this is actually the small one on the right bottom corner uh, if you want to replace it you can click on and select your own but uh, when you are using your own make sure it's relatively small let me hover over it's uh, 48 by 48 so it's a power of 2 image so it's a quite small image if you're using a large one uh, that will be right in the middle of your screen so it's quite ugly okay but in this case we just want to remove it by reducing opacity to 0 uh, there is another one this is a title image this is the actually the watermark image in the middle so uh, there's no opacity here but what you can do is just to scale down a fade in and fade out value back to zero again and now if you start the turntable uh, you will get a different result okay right loaded movie and play movie and this is a much better looking uh, turntable now okay if you want if you wish you can also turn off shift P the floor grid and if you turn off the floor grid it won't be visible now how to actually save your movie because it's just a loaded up sequence within the memory so if you want to actually save it out you have to export the movie and that will create a ZBrush movie MPEG for you so that's the trick to save images to save the movie you have to export them so it's not enough if you just render if you want to create a high quality render so let me uh, switch back to shift P and if you want to create the turntable that shows the shadows and shows everything in the best quality then you have to re render your image first so render one single image and once you have a rendered image ZBrush will recognize that you have an ongoing rendering and when you're going in here in the movie and uh, let me delete this movie no I don't want to save it uh, let me engage the turntable so right now the rendering is much more slower this is my first frame only and as you see we have a double progress bar the the darker orange shows the actual progress on the particular frame and this brighter orange will show the the number of completed frames so if you are rendering this way it will be much much slower to render okay just let me stop uh, the uh, record and I will get back okay so now we have the render ready uh, let me check it in the movie play movie so this way the uh, shadows are rendered within the turntable um, it, it may take uh, quite some time uh, depending on the uh, initial quality of your rendered image so if you have a single image that takes about uh, 10 minutes to render then that means this whole turn turntable could be half a day um, it, it's not a necessity but uh, it can take some time okay so we don't need actually this one but uh, just let us save it because it's easier so let me 
it will be an MPEG file. Um, now big. Okay. And now it is loaded back again and saved out. Okay. Now what kind of other options we have? Uh, what to do if you want to modify the light sources? So let me open this up, double clicking on a divider and let me drag and drop the material and go to the light and lock it to the side. Now by default uh, there is only one light that's active and if you want to change the angle of lighting you can do it by dragging the all this light source icon. If you want to add intensity or change the ambient and the distance from the model you can do it but this is the main light source so usually the main light source has the most energy now but if you want to fine-tune your lighting you might want to crank back on the intensity a bit not much but just a little bit and uh, add a secondary light now if I'm hitting on the secondary light now it is just activated but there is no light created yet so I have to hit again and then it might be a little bit of um, confusion because now I have two lights active at the time only one active light is visible here in the uh, preview sphere but uh, the position of the two lights is actually the same so now you see it's highlighted it's activated you have this tiny border so you can drag away the dot and when you switch to the original one now it will show the uh, initial distance, initial position, and here you have the second one. But there, uh, there's no other difference than uh, selecting the two. Now, if you want to set back this light to put it behind uh, the model, you have to tap on the dot. Now, it would push it back to the to the back of the model, and this way you can uh, create some rim lights or edge lights, back lights. Uh, so let me pick a different color now as you see it's already indicated here so it's already there intensity is relatively low because it's a secondary light that is generated so let me add on uh, for some drama okay so this is uh, one way let me switch it to a little bit softer so a bit more orange uh, intensity is way too high so but uh, this is fine let me get back to the main light main light intensity crank it back up a bit to add back more light and now this is just one tiny touch that can add life it can be a little bit warmer so depending on the situation you want to depict if you want if you have a monster you can pull this light source way below so uh, but it's much more like standing covered shine so uh, let me switch it back okay so that's about the lights and uh, of course you have different uh, light cap solutions and other options but one thing please uh, keep in mind we are using a skin shade 4 material here for a reason it's quite good for uh, generic uh, skin tone uh, but uh, matte cap materials are not handling lights so that's the point matte caps are using images and bases and they are imitating real life uh, behavior of the various materials now if you want to use light sources and you want to adjust your light the easiest way if you keep yourself to the standard materials now what happens if you want to fine-tune your uh, the material behavior for example here you have this kid but you want to add more specularity to the light in that case just let me close the light section and where is the material so here's the material let me put this below the material uh, the light and here we have a couple modifiers now it's almost true for every basic shader that you have uh, quite uh, uh, large uh, choice of adjustments so for example let me crank this up to specularity so make it a little bit more shiny right now uh, the t-shirt, the hair, and everything uses the same skin shade material. So this way everything will change, but uh, we can uh, mix that up uh, by changing the materials. So uh, if you take a look, if you're holding down control, 
and hovering over metallicity, you will get an information about these values and how to use them. Um, a, a general tip, so you can use this ambient to crank up uh, kind of a brightness of your uh, model. And also you can adjust the diffuse. So if you have it, right now it's set to 80. If you want to keep your textures um, at the uh, brightness level, you can crank this up. If you want to lower it, it will it will just fade uh, the diffuse. So uh, if you're looking for this type of effect, you can do it. But by default, this 80 is quite good. You might want to lower it in some cases or not. But uh, it's depending on your choice. So specularity is a good thing to do. Uh, if you want to make your image, make your model transparent, uh, don't use this transparency. It would be a better solution if I add a new model. Uh, just let me insert a uh, sphere. And uh, let me assign a new material for the sphere. So I want to create a kind of a clone nose. So instead of a skin shade, um, I will use this reflect red. Now everything will switch to reflect red because um, there is no so except the body uh, this material this material is not assigned to any uh, model. So what to do um, in the material channel material channel is turned on uh, model is selected so I go up here the color and fill the object so right now this particular material is assigned to the uh, sphere so I can switch back to my uh, typical skin shade so skin shade is uh, going back but this one will remain with the with the sphere because it is assigned with the color and fill object now just let me grab this model and uh, change the size of it scale it down just let me this is just a clone, clone nose okay so there we go now but we want to make it look transparent now what to do and how to do it if I just render this out uh, this is the result so let me see what happens okay so there's definitely no transparency we're going down here and uh, there is something display called display properties and we have a BPR setting now this BPR setting should be opened and we have this visibility value but uh, uh, you have to enable BPR transparent shading now it will ask uh, about uh, enabling transparent option yes we want to enable it it actually does uh, this this render and we have this transparent option turned on and visibility is 100 uh, so that means uh, there's not much uh, going on here so let me dial this back to 38 and check in the rendering what we have done okay now the visibility is there so this is uh, definitely transparent now this material uh, it's not the best option all the time because it's a matte cap material so it reacts uh, to the light uh, a little bit differently but uh, this is the base basic solution to create uh, a transparent uh, model or part of the model now so let me go back to the sub tool I don't want to keep it visible so let me select any, something else and turn off visibility for the nose so that is for uh, making transparent things. Now what to do if you want to uh, create a vax effect. The vax effect uh, will um, help you to um, make the skin more believable. So the skin shade is turned on and for uh, enabling vax you have to enable it at the render, st uh, render section. So right now, Vax Preview is enabled, so it's visible there. That's first thing to do. The other thing is you're walking down, and it might work to check if the Preview Vax is actually cranked up. So it's 
strength is one so that will be visible if you have something uh, going on on the back front so this is the second uh, thing to check and the third thing to check is you want to check at the material now it's actually the same palette so don't be surprised if you jump through here material and close modifiers and within wax modifiers we have a strength value now this one was turned on previously so if I just crank it up this effect of the wax will be much more visible now this is way too much wax going on but I just want to show uh, how this one is looking so uh, if you are going back to the material and reduce this wax strength to zero this is the normal skin shade look but if you increase this strength to about uh, 40 or 50 that's kind of a mid-range and it gives you kind of a glow within the skin and uh, that's a good looking effect now if you are disturbed with this because you're still painting uh, then you don't want to use wax modifiers too early but uh, but if you want to if you're closer to the rendering section then you can use the wax modifier of course you can adjust the radius you can adjust the Fresnel and playing with the different effects so it's up to you just don't forget that you can use and hold down the control to explore what the different values are doing okay so that's about wax uh, we had transparency uh, another important thing is um, how to manipulate shadows now when you are creating a default BPR render it will generate a relatively strong shadow now you can adjust these shadows uh, but uh, the main problem with these is that, that you have a kind of um, quite edgy and quite um, strong colorization of the shadow now how to get rid of it so we can go up to the render again but right now oh, we need to take a look at the BPR shadow section now the main two values that adjusting the shadows uh, regarding to the edge of the shadows are uh, the rays and the angle now rays is the number of um, ray samples are coming from the light uh, if you increase the number of the rays you will receive a better quality shadow you can blur more your shadow but that means your rendering will slow down so uh, you have to find a kind of a golden path so it's a midway uh, solution now it should be about uh, 50 or 40 to get some kind of a nicer result now let me show the difference so I using 12 at the beginning now I have way more and you will see not so much of a change but the shadows are definitely brighter so if you want to actually spread the samples of the shadows to blur the edges you have to adjust in conjunction with this uh, value the angle too now angle is zero that means there's no spreading there's no softening of the shadows but if you are changing the angle for example to uh, 10 now take a look at the effect now rendering will be slower definitely uh, but the shadows will be smoother can you see how it changed so it's up to you you can adjust it so if you increase the angle more this blur will be much more significant uh, now uh, another important aspect to adjust the value of the shadow quality is uh, changing on global strength or floor shadow strength if you have two dark shadows on the floor you can change it here or you can actually create a 3d plane and use the 3d plane instead of your floor grid and that way you can use only the global strength now global shadow strength is 0 0.6 so I can even make it lighter 0 0.4 let me see what's happening okay now the shadow is much more real life so usually if you have a normal environment there is no such thing as super dark shadows okay so this way you can adjust it don't forget uh, rendering takes time 
and uh, um, use your time wisely so you don't have to jump in and create a render as quickly as possible. It uh, takes some time to adjust these values.